Hey guys, it's I, Hitsuka, and we're back again with another Locals Report and Insight on uh, Shadow vs. Evolve, the TCG. Uh, this past Sunday, we played at the Locals at Forever After Games in order to prepare us for the uh, the upcoming shop challenge coming up on the 30th. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about that at another time. Uh, but the Locals we played in this Sunday, there were 15 players. So that means four rounds of Swiss, uh, best of ones, 25-minute rounds, and top prizing was paid out to top eights. And let me tell you guys, your boy got second. Pretty exciting, right? And we got second with the Fairy Forest. And now this, this is a crazy go part, guys, all right? We won all die rolls that day. We went first all day, right? And that's going first all day with an aggressive deck, generally pretty good, right? Anyway, enough of that. Let's go right into round one. So round one, we played into uh, Ward Haven. We went first, right? We went first all day, right, guys? Anyway, uh, the round went as much as you would have expected if uh, we're playing the aggressive fairy tokens and all that stuff into a Ward Haven deck. Um, what we're afraid of, obviously, is if they set up wards, and they play really defensive, and then they eventually just out-resource us, or out-trade us in the late game. Uh, but, thank God, uh, the Haven player wasn't able to set up wards in time, or heals in time, so we were able to slowly build up our, our resources and our berries. Like, uh, we got Dancer off really early into the game, with uh, several bounce effects such as... Uh, Ancient Elf and Guidance, and we were just slowly buffing up our fairies in the EX and in the play zone, right? Uh, it got so bad that our fairies were coming out as 7-7s, seven right? Eventually, we got to turn 8, and then we just had Rose Queen close out the game for us. So, pretty straightforward game, uh, from my, in my experience. If you're playing Force, aggressive Force into Haven, you need to get in there, right? You need to be aggressive before they can set up. Uh, round 2. Oh, uh, <laughs> we actually played into Ram Dragon, and unfortunately, we lost. But it, here's the thing, right? The game was definitely a game we should have won. Uh, so the Dragon player, uh, he couldn't ramp up early. He couldn't get uh, orbs or oracles, the one that give him that gives him the uh, empty play point, right? And he bricked a little, right? Uh, and throughout the Mid and late game, if he drew Forte, he had the match, right? Uh, he didn't draw Forte, so that's another lucky thing towards us. The bad thing now, though, is on turn 8, we made a huge terminal misplay. So on turn 8, we dropped Queen, right? But the thing is, <clears throat> even when we converted our fairies in the EX... We didn't have enough to engage the queen to recover play points and to activate enough uh, thorn burst for lethal. Because I, if I remember correctly, he was the dragon player was at four for life. We needed to activate two thorn bursts. We dropped the queen at eight, but thorn bursts cost two play points, right? And Queen only recovers one play point equal to the number of Thorn Bursts you have in your EX. We have three. Right. So, yeah, you guys can understand the math. We were missing one play point for lethal, which is really bad. Because at that point, he had lethal on board. Uh, and then this is the bad, this is the very sad thing, guys. All right. <sighs> We had three cards in hand, including if we didn't, or uh, no, no, no. We had four cards in hand if we didn't play the queen, and we had a sil silver bolt in our hand. Now, if you don't know what silver bolt does, it's a seven drop forest craft. Uh, you draw a card from your deck, and then you do damage to a enemy follower or to the enemy leader equal to the number of cards you have in your hand. Right. So... If we played Silver Bolts with 7 mana, it would have drawn into 4 cards again, and would, would have done 4 damage to the enemy leader, and we would have won that game, right? Uh, that was the major misplay uh, late game. We also had another major misplay early game. 
uh, we had a, I think it was like turn five or four, we had a fairy dancer on the field, and we guidanced the dancer back to our hand or in order to continue buffing our fairies. The problem with that is the dancer was there turn before, so he could have, so the dancer could have hit face before we bounced it back. So in that sense, we also missed out two damage. If we hit that two damage earlier, then it wouldn't matter if we played Queen or Silver Bolt late game, right? That would have been enough to get the kill. Uh, <laughs> that's unfortunate, but those are misplays. I'm only human. And hey, guys, remember, if you ever misplay, yeah, improve on those guys. Remember those misplays? And then the next game, correct them. So round two, we did lose to Ramp Dragon, unfortunately. Uh, round three, we actually played into D Shift Rune. And here's the thing. That game was very straightforward. Unfortunately, the Rune player bricked. He opened Double Dog, uh, which is uh, <laughs> not something you want to open, right? And we, we opened really broken, right? We opened, I remember specifically, we opened Double Sanctuary and Double Bell Ring. I don't remember the fifth card, right? But Double Sanctuary just start, you know, if we ever hit fairies, they're just coming out as 3-3s three right off the bat with the sail. It's huge. Uh, eventually, mid-game did hit for us, and we built up such a huge advantage because the rune player was, unfortunately, he did brick. He's trying to fight an uphill battle at that point, but with double sanctuaries, and we had we hit fairy generation, we just eventually overran him with our buffed-up fairies, and then uh, we, what, turn 7, Closing out the game, we had Lucifer evolve. We burned him for four, and then he uh, he did his turn. Then turn eight, we just dropped Queen for lethal. And then we went to round four, uh, last round of the day. We actually played into uh, Banner Swordcraft. And well, let me tell you guys, if you play Fairy Forcecraft, there are two decks that I hate playing into. First is Dragoncraft, Ramp Dragoncraft specifically, because they obviously they ramp up, but also Dragoncraft in general plays very good late game dragons that you're not ever gonna out trade. They have board clear and board wipes, and as very forestcraft, generally anything that does board damage, at least like one or two, is may actually wipe out your entire board and your resources. They play heals and they play wards. So heals and wards, um, heals are very straightforward. Any damage you do. It's not going to stick, and then they just scale into late game, and then they'll just out-trade you. Wards, any damage, when you're hitting wards, you're not hitting face, which lets them scale as well, right? Uh, Swordcraft is different, because, well, Banner Swordcraft is an aggressive deck, right? Much like aggressive fairies. The difference is Banner Swordcraft is able to establish uh, aggression, like, very early on, compared to the aggression that fairy would be able to establish early on. Because the way uh, Banner Sword is, they can be really aggressive by turn one. And then they will eat, slowly build up that aggression as the turns go on until they kill you. Uh, Fairy, on the other hand, early game, uh, they're more ramping for the mid game, right? So you play a couple fairies, you play guidance and all that stuff. And then once like mid game hits, that's when they start ramping up their aggression. And they'll build up strong fairies and take over the board. And uh, that's actually how my round four went, right? Swordcraft was able to establish early board and early game and was able to pressure me off. Uh, things actually turned around for us because we were able to stabilize with uh, Archer and Wisps and Fairies in order to slowly chip away at his uh, units. Uh, by turn six, seven, and eight, that's when we are, that's when we actually uh, turned the game into our favor, right? So by turn six, uh, we had Aria with Ward. We flooded the board, and then we get, uh, and then we engaged the Aria, and we used our fairies to trade and establish board control, or at least stabilize. Uh, turn seven, we had I remember the hand specifically. We had Dancer, huge card, right? Ancient Elf and Guidance. So what we did turn seven was we Dancer Guidance bounced back, uh, Dancer Ancient Elf bounced back. And then we were just able to, uh, you know, get control, pump up our fairies with Dancer and the bounce effects. And then at that point, the game was in our favor because anything he did, our fairies were strong enough to out-trade him and out-value him. And we were able to win the race 
if the game were to continue at that trajectory. Right? And, you know, turn eight came around. We learned from our mistake in round two. We didn't go for the queen plate. We could have. It was definitely game. I counted. I did the math. But I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to silver bowl. We're going to draw a card and make sure we kill. Right? So we ended up the day uh, second place. Pretty exciting, right, guys? With a 3-1 score, uh, the game we did lo lose, uh, we should have won. Uh, given that uh, the Dragon player did brick, and he did play the best of his ability, uh, we unfortunately misplayed round two, and that cost us the game there. Uh, anyway, top eight was there were like three dragons, three swords, one forest, your boy, and one runecraft player. Top four breakdown was Ramp Dragon, the guy that we actually lost to in round two. Phenomenal player. Uh, second was us, Fairy Force, with a 3-1 score. And third place was Ramp Dragon. And then fourth place was Banner Sword in a 3-1 score as well, right? So if we think about this, obviously we all know, and we all probably realize that Dragon is probably going to be the top deck for a very long time, right? I can see, like, big tournaments. It, the finals are most likely going to be Dragon or Dragon. But I do believe that uh, Swordcraft and Forcecraft do have a place in the meta specifically because they those two are the more aggressive decks. And the best way to keep you know, ramp decks or control decks in check is through aggression. You know what? Today has shown, or I guess this tournament has shown that, you know, there is a place in the meta for Swordcraft. That's it for now, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate that. And hit that bell for notifications on any upcoming contents and stream of that sort. I do stream. Probably going to have to figure out a stream schedule. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time now. All right? Bye, guys. Bye-bye.